One of the things that's so great about tiny houses is the way that they can enable people to do things in life that they love. Here in Germany, we're about to meet a YouTube gamer who has built a beautiful DIY tiny house with an incredible gaming setup to help facilitate her passion. Inessa, how's it going? Good, it's nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you, and it is wonderful to see your beautiful home. Thank you. Now, this was actually built as a DIY project, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, except for the heating, but apart from that, it's all DIY. It took, I think, the last uh, two and a half years uh, to get it from planning to building and to finally getting it finished. Wow. How did you find the process of building your own home? It was challenging, it was yeah, really challenging, but we uh, did this as a family, so I worked on that with my parents, and it was a super fun project. Uh, I got to spend so much time with my parents, which was cool, and I learned so much, so yeah, yeah. rewarding experience. Great, being able to do it as a family project is so nice, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it certainly yeah. is. And so, before building this tiny house, had you done anything with construction before? Not at all, no. I mean, I was able to hold a screwdriver, but I think that was about it. And now I'm able to like build my own furniture, and so that's been a huge process. And what was it that actually inspired you to build your own tiny house? I gotta say it was your channel, actually. Really? <laughs> so one of the New Zealand tours that I watched uh, a couple of years back, and uh, I was in the process of moving, and I couldn't find any flat that was actually affordable for me. So I decided to plan long-term and to have my own little space with a little financial help from my parents was I was able to do and then uh, just move in there and be debt free and have my own little thing for the future and that worked out well. And what's the situation here in Germany with tiny houses? Is it legal to do this or is it sort of a gray area here as well? Yeah, it's legal, but you got to, you know, build to code and uh, you got to have a permit to uh, permanently live in one. So. Uh, it's a bit of a problem when you first get started because it can be quite overwhelming to know all the rules. But, I mean, it's possible. You just need to find uh, someone who's willing to give you land for it and you need to uh, be in touch with uh, the local authorities to make it happen. So that can be a bit of a stepping stone, yeah. And the parking spot that you found for the house here, can you talk to me a little bit about that? So it's my parents' property. We actually rented a workshop place when we did, like, the basic construction, but everything else had to happen here because it would be too expensive to rent out the whole workshop for like a year or something. And I was able to finish it here and I got my uh, dad's workshop just next door, so that makes sense to use his tools and uh, his techniques to yeah, get this whole finished. Perfect, what a great setup. So what size is the tiny house? This is 9 meters by 2.5 meters and the highest point is 4 meters which is just like the, the legal <laughs> restrictions that Germany has on trailers. Well from the outside the style of the home looks really interesting. Can you talk to me a little bit about the design? So I think one of the major concerns was the weight because uh, in Germany you can only uh, put on so much weight on a trailer. I think it's yeah 3.5 tons for most of the people. So we were pretty limited in terms of like siding and everything, um, but we found a way to make it all wooden but still pretty small so that it's yeah fit in within these 3.5 tons. And I wanted something that looked friendly but not too colorful because I'm all about pastel tones and uh, minimalist. So obviously, yeah, I try to choose not too many colors, but I'm happy with it. It looks, yeah, it looks pretty friendly. Well, you've done such a great job with the exterior of the home and I can't wait to see what you've done inside. Can we take a look? Yeah, sure, come inside. Thank you. This is great. Thank you. You really have created a very light and open design with this home, haven't you? Yeah, that was something that was really important to me because I knew that in a small space you could feel uh, quite confined, but if you make it light and open and uh, pretty much white, <laughs> then yeah, it's going to work a lot better. Yeah. I think of all of the tiny houses that I visited in Europe so far, this one definitely feels the biggest. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you say that because that was actually like my purpose. Cause most of the tiny homes in Germany are quite small and especially with what I did with the downstairs bed. So that takes up a lot of space, but I still kind of managed to make it not feel as confined. 
and let us talk about this gaming <laughs> workstation. This is really serious, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's actually pretty big for a tiny home, I would say. But because I'm doing uh, gaming on YouTube and video editing, I need to have a space that actually works for me uh, as a home office. So it takes up a lot of space, but it's definitely worth it. And it's on wheels, so I can just move it around if I have guests over and um, yeah, it's not in everybody's way. Wow. And for your live streaming, you've even got a green screen and everything that you set up, don't you? Yeah, it's stored in here and I can just set it up here. Super simple system and then all of this turns into a full studio, so that's pretty cool. That is really amazing. Yeah, it's, it's definitely fun. Uh, it's uh, something that yeah, has accompanied me for a couple of years now. And I'm glad that I was able to uh, continue doing this in my home. It's quite funny because I feel like I've traveled halfway around the world to be here. And yet there's a definite taste of home. I'm seeing all of this <laughs> Lord of the Rings yeah. paraphernalia everywhere. This is really cool. Yeah, I'm sort of a geek and I have been for quite a few years. I knew that when I was building, uh, I knew that I had to implement some of these things into my home. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. <laughs> Especially with the table there. That's such a nice touch. Yeah, I love this one. When I actually, when I sit there and have breakfast, I always like trace the journey of the fellowship and, and just see these small little places on Middle Earth that I haven't seen before. So the map's pretty cool, yeah. Very cool. <laughs> and then over here, we've got your bed. Yeah, it's pretty big. I mean, some people say it's pretty big. And I wanted to have a space that looks super comfortable and also have some storage. So that's why I implemented these uh, shelves, some little plants and my filming gear, all easy to access and some more Lord of the Rings stuff. So of course. <laughs> I had to have some space for that as well. Nice. And then have you built some storage here as well? Yeah, it's actually full of storage. When you fold it up, you can access these uh, drawers that I built and they have even more storage than I actually need. So I'm glad to have some extra just in case. And I see that you've actually got a loft up here in this design as well. So why did yeah. you decide to put the bed downstairs and not up in the loft? Yeah, I I think uh, when I first heard of tiny houses, I was uh, that was actually one thing that I was concerned about the most because I didn't want to sleep uh, in the place that gets the warmest during the summer because that's right. just not working for me. So I decided to put the bed here and then have the loft for everything that I just needed space for. So right now it's working as uh, like a film studio or video studio where I film my videos and uh, also just sit up there, have a cup of coffee or tea and just look outside. Because it's a really bright room, like I have windows on three sides and yeah, it just is a nice place to relax. That totally makes sense. And then moving over here, I see you've built in some storage and this is such a retro idea. Yeah, this is actually from the US Army. Uh, I found this in a recycling shop and it was in a pretty bad state when I got it. And I decided to make this a project and turn it into a wardrobe. It took a lot of work, but eventually it worked out and I'm super glad to have it. Yeah, very nice. And then we're in your kitchen and you have got a lot of workspace in here, don't you? Yeah, that was one of my priorities because I hated when I was uh, studying and I was in a really small flat, I hated to work in this kitchen because it was just too small. So I decided to go all crazy and just put the most uh, possible space in, the, in this place. And uh, I'm gonna say that I didn't regret it at all. Yeah, so obviously you do enjoy cooking a lot. Yeah, I gotta say I do. Uh, that's why I have the huge fridge uh, and a freezing compartment because I like doing it, but only if I have enough space and uh, yeah. And then you've got a good size oven and four burners as well. That's a little bit of a luxury for a tiny house. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, I was, uh, yeah, I decided to uh, go with these because I just love cooking with gas and I think it does make a difference in terms of taste, but it also made sense because I had the uh, gas heating so I could use the same system. So that was pretty good. Very cool. And of course, another Lord of the Rings reference on the backsplash there. Yeah, <laughs> I can resist on that one. <laughs> nice. So you've got gas here for the cooking. Can you talk to me a little bit about the services in this house? So water, power, all of that sort of thing. Yeah, I have power from the exterior. So uh, there's a cable running into my home uh, from my dad's workshop. So uh, that's going to stay that way for a little while. I plan to have a solar setup once I'm on the property that I actually want to move on to and everything else is gas and uh, yeah, water is also exterior. So I don't have any tanks or anything because I knew that I would have to move between properties. So it made sense to, to have something that I could just hook up and don't have to worry about anything. And then I'm guessing behind that door there, we've got your bathroom. Yeah. Can we take a look? Yeah, sure. 
This is great. This is a really nice size. <laughs> yeah, I try to uh, go really basic, just a shower and a toilet and uh, like a little faucet and that's it. So nothing else. Yeah, the composting toilet, this looks <laughs> like a really interesting design. And yeah. you've, the way that you've wrapped it with all of the paper looks so good. Yeah, it was actually, uh, those are pages of a book from my Latin studies. So I decided to uh, incorporate some of my previous life into uh, this home. Yeah, it's just in use for, I think, one week now, but I'm happy with it. I'm glad that I did it. So. Yeah, great. Yeah. And then what you've done here with the vanity and basin looks really good. That's a vintage mirror from, I think, the 80s or 70s even. I got this from, like, Etsy. And this is actually from a household clearing. Someone wanted to throw that away, and I thought, no, you can't do that. It's too beautiful. And I kept it with me for, I think, eight years uh, in my previous flats, and then I decided I had to incorporate this one into my home. And, yeah, I'm glad that I found the spot for it. And so how long have you been living in the home now? Uh, it's only been two weeks full-time living. Uh, I actually worked in this place for, I think, a year now, but I didn't have water hookups, so I decided to yeah, stay <laughs> in my previous uh, room, but I then moved in like uh, two weeks ago, and I'm super happy I did it. So you're finding that the tiny house is actually living up to your expectation then? More than, more than that, actually. I'm surprised at how easy it is to adjust uh, to this place, which is like uh, quite a few sizes smaller than uh, what I usually lived in but super happy with it. Yeah, and can we talk a little bit about the cost that was involved mm -hmm. in building this home? So all in all, um, including the appliances in the kitchen and the uh, heating system, which was uh, quite expensive, um, was uh, 35,000 euros. So a pretty good like, budget, I would say, for a project like this one. And what is the heating system that you've installed? Because obviously here in Europe, it's so important to have a warm home. Yeah, I think that's why it was uh, so expensive. So we have uh, propane gas uh, with bottles and it switches from one bottle to the other. So I can um, switch them out when I need to. And so it's normal radiators like in every other flat or house, easy to use. But yeah, it was pretty expensive because we couldn't really do it on our own because it's with gas. So it's, yeah, like you gotta, you gotta <laughs> pass this on to the expert. And you've actually documented the whole build of your house on YouTube, haven't you? Yeah, I did. I started with my gaming channel on YouTube and then uh, when I told my viewers about the tiny home project, then they were like, maybe uh, you can show that to us as well. And then I thought, why not make a second channel? And that turned out to be like my main job now uh, after three years. So yeah, it's been quite an amazing journey. I love to document the whole thing uh, as well for myself because, um, you know, when you look back on these like first few steps in building, you can't really believe that um, how much you learn and it's nice to, to look back on it that way and um, yeah. Well, that's really exciting. Congratulations on your channel yeah, then. Thank you. Moving in uh, two weeks ago, uh, it was a very special moment. Like I couldn't believe it at first because it's been such a long time uh, building on it and then uh, yeah, I had to kind of adjust to it in the first couple of days. But when I adjusted to it, I really felt that this was an accomplishment that I couldn't get anywhere else. Like having uh, the space that you actually built by yourself is something that you can't compare it to anything else in life. It's uh, sort of an accomplishment that gives you a sense of empowerment. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. You really have done such a great job with this home. It's so cool to see some really unique features in here like this great gaming <laughs> setup. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thanks for coming. Nessa has done such a great job with the design and build of this home. It really is cool to see the way that she's created a space that facilitates both her work as well as her leisure time. As a bit of a closet gamer myself, I'm also ridiculously jealous of this super cool setup. And there is no doubt in my mind that Nessa has created a space that will work incredibly well for her in the future.